So, hello. Um, I started playing around with type when I was quite young. I had multiple variations of my handwriting, and uh, when I was 12, I started writing with a two story lowercase a. Um, but I also was playing around with computers and programming, and uh, at that time, the pixels were big and chunky and physical objects, not something that had like disappeared back in the background. And so in the early 90s, the first computer fonts I designed were raster fonts, but they were not one-bit fonts with pure black and white. They were fonts that were manually anti-aliased. So I guess this is kind of the extreme version of hinting. You're just shuffling around the desired anti-aliased result. And I guess you can consider, kind of like in what I'm going to talk about here, that we, in a sense, um, have a very, very strict unit system, similar to what Frank was talking about, because I'm going to use the pixel grid with a font where the lowercase alphabet is three pixels high. And then you, starting out with this constraint, uh, and try to design something reasonable within it. And well, well, it, it has to do with K-Magic, which Frank already showed. This is that's something that kicked off after last year's LGM. And I got to learn about something called UFO, Unified Font Object, which is an XML-based file format for um, rigging up and manipulating fonts and collaboration between different programs. And since I... After two weeks of putting together the basic infrastructure for Kamagic, so I could start experimenting with spacing of type, um, I figured out that, well, it's quite a simple format. So if I sit down and in GIMP, I draw ASCII, um, one, one long image, and then just like annotate with dots where you have a separation between the characters. Well, this is how you used to create raster fonts. Um, normally back in the early 90s. Then I can write a small C program, which reads in this file, spits out a UFO file, and I can create a TTF file. Hmm, that seems fun. And I drew that image in an hour, late at night, and then I spent another hour uh, making it generate XML, and then another couple of hours fixing mistakes I made in the XML. Um, but I had something I could actually run. I'll get back to some of the technical details. For what I actually did was I made an outline font with uh, transparent opacity areas for the grayscale pixels. But what I have been thinking about since the early 90s is that, well, the reason that those pixels are brighter than the others that they're, is that they don't have the same ink coverage. And the reason for that is when you rasterize the shape or the curves, um, within the square, you have a different shape that doesn't cover as much. So I started saying, well, just shaving like, with lines is not enough. I say, like, well, if I have quarter circles, I can do better. Well, quarter circles is not that nice. If you go even further and say that, well, to make the O or a C, we want to have three by three square puzzle pieces that we can fit together. And what I'm showing you right now is the first iteration when I kind of like had these three by three size circle. And then a couple more iterations and I add up Say, well, this is at least something I can puzzle within those constraints. But then all these corner cases where I don't like it. So I start adding special purpose puzzle pieces and glyphs. And the fun thing is, because I had just kind of defined saying that this is the puzzle piece that goes here, there's another puzzle piece that goes there, I could just swap out the entire set of puzzle pieces. So on the top, there is an exaggerated graphic version of how I faked the grayscale. Um, a much higher resolution, uh, diagonal half-toning, or what you should call it, grid, uh, ends up with free type rendering big chunky grayscale pixels. Um, but I could also vary the puzzle pieces and then just use circles of different dimension and um, rely on that my separation that I have tried to design it, so it should be, not readable, legible, when the lowercase is three pixels high, that should mean there should be enough information to 
discern which character is which. Um, also, when you end up with such a very graphic modification of it. But having these different puzzle pieces means I could also have many other sets of puzzle pieces, so just swapping them out would get a different weight. And here you also see some more experiments. I'm going through roughly in linear uh, time how the development was of this thing. Um, and here we reach a stage where I've been refining things quite a bit. And um, this is the first stage in development of this one where I had a two story lowercase a. And I experimented with alternatives. Some of them are bad. And I mentioned already this with special case puzzle pieces. The D, Q, B, and P on the top. I've created some puzzle pieces for joining up the, um, the curve, the cusp, with the vertical stem. But then I realized, well, I'm a little bit too strict with myself with the constraints here. I'm, hmm, I'm actually, well, let's step back and redesign the constraints, because I'm making both the constraints and the design within the constraints. So if the constraints are too bad, well, let's just lift some of them. So what I did in the difference between those two is that I want to be able to just stack the tiles on top of each other. Then I don't need a special case tile for where this circle curve joins up. It's just another thing that sits on top. Um, and this is how it ended up looking. Uh, still, this, when you render it with the lowercase three pixels high, we have roughly the same font as we started off with. And this is just one out of numerous different uh, representations that could uh, end up with the same resurrection at a tiny, tiny little size. It's also fun because since it quantizes correctly there, I know that at all bigger sizes, uh, it should end up having the curves in positions uh, which makes you able to at least distinguish things from each other. Then I started throwing in even more little things to see how things would look. But at this stage, I also started reevaluating some other things. But, but to just get back to kind of the roots of it, and showing a screenshot of using the kind of fake big chunky pixels thing, this is the MCGA resolution, which I was quite happy and familiar with in the early 90s. And uh, you can actually fit a regular size terminal um, inside 320 by 200. Um, and if you know what you're expecting to read, <laughs> But whether you can do the same thing with putting something on a mobile phone and using slightly bigger fonts, uh, and it's crisp. But okay, it's not, not really, really nice, but th this was where I actually wanted to go, and I went really, really overboard. How was this sausage made? Um, I ended up inventing my own version of ASCII art. So instead of just reading this image file, I spat out the contents uh, with the different gray levels as different characters. So along the left-hand side here we see where, how Y and Z were defined. And here's a palette where I gradually, organically developed, like I knew the key bindings, and I knew there had things that had like a system of how things should work. And here's a preview where I run with the font in my terminal, where I just show the shape instead of the character. So I get the somewhat instant preview. And making those components is painful. I just manually edited a text file with Bessier curves and control points. And uh, it took me probably about like 10, 15 seconds to see how things would end up. And for a large set of different variants of the family, I have a um, text file describing um, which source files to use for reading the characters, um, options for chemagic and spacing it, and a bunch of overrides. This is using not the table-driven method in chemagic, but the more machine vision-driven one that analyzes also the character shapes. And um, on the top is also 
command line options for TTF auto hint to auto hint the resulting fonts. Um, but I was not happy. Um, actually, I wasn't quite happy with the fonts I'd made, nor with the process. So, how much time have we got left? How much time have we got left? Uh, seven minutes. Seven minutes. I want this microphone here to work. It does. It does squeeze. Hello? Well. So, uh, this process of doing things was quite tedious. And changing the component uh, was troublesome. But working a text editor, I'm quite efficient. So, so I was wondering for myself, would it be better if I could stitch together my font from these puzzle pieces um, in a more rapid manner um, and actually have exactly what I want to have on screen quite quickly. Um, and, and and create a system where I could just put things together in such a way. And um, other things which immediately become fun when you start playing it that way is to live see how tweaking um, the set of components to show will appear. But um, I did actually go even further than that as well. But let's. Um, so instead of the ASCII art version, um, I, I was thinking, how would I prefer to throw things around if I'm going to like uh, explore how I'm going to do a type design? So here we have ASCII lowercase um, going to the right. Uh, and this works like a spreadsheet, so the, the characters down there with diacritics are kind of cloned cells of where the tiles are. And um, I also encode different versions of the design, so this is for like a condensed version where I have overrides for some of the elements. Um, and yeah, this is definitely a work in pro pro progress, and um, that includes the tool, um, as well as the font. I haven't properly tried to re-puzzle, um, for instance, the X, um, but let's touch up this P, which also is wrong and jumps up there, and have a live preview of how that update affects the rendering there, or mark the P and saying that, well, I actually want to to adjust the side bearings of it. Uh, okay, then you see that, oh, whoops, there I include parts of the O in the P. But it started to be quite fun to play with this, and the, the distraction just got deeper. Um, so if we play then with But what we're seeing now is uh, playing around with vector shapes for these components. Uh, a thing that I actually started thinking about, and I think I discussed it with some people, um, even at uh, the end of Interactivos in Madrid last year, um, that I actually want to paint directly on the characters. Uh, I don't like Bessier curves for rapid prototyping. It has the same problem as my former workflow had, where I was constructing these fonts from these text files, these source files. Um, and the way around that, uh, so, I'm going to have to use my touchpad, and this is going to be ugly, but I haven't done this in a nice way anyways. Um, if I enter this command line thing, type painter1, and then I start drawing on some of the characters. 
I, I can't, I'm not allowed to draw there because there's tiles overlapping each other. Then I can start trying to figure out what is necessary um, to, um, to, to refine and easily be able to experiment with how different positionings of such things would affect things. And one of the things that I wanted to do earlier when I was designing a different component set of different weights, I really wanted to have the same horizontal metrics for the different weights. But I'd only been growing my stroke width inwards in the cusps and, and kind of, I had to define the topology in this very low resolution. And, but if, if it should be possible, also based on the experience with uh, um, Hoka Magic, when it tries to dynamically space and you get different weight input in for the machine vision thing, I basically knew that it's not enough just to grow to the inside of the characters. You need to balance it somehow on both sides of the stroke. Um, So here is, I spent a little bit of time, but I, I don't have like a proper drawing tool there yet. I can just like almost like add and remove dots, but it actually somehow looks like the imperfections of lead type, so I, I didn't mind too much. Um, uh, but this is roughly the stage this thing is at, at the moment. Um, uh, it is actually right now running on my local computer. Uh, but um, it is actually a collaborative online uh, font editor. And uh, if you throw slash edit after the web page of OX0, well, it's actually the, the name of the font family is the start of video memory of a VGA card, which is where originally we're pushing pixels and trying to put things together at the beginning of the 90s. Um, but yeah, that's where I stop.